Denver's a mile high up in the air. Yeah. So whether you're visiting Denver or even you li live here, <laughs> any of you drink is going to hit you three times as hard. Yes, it is. And so they... Oh, well, speaking of which, let me have... No. <laughs> yeah, let's have <laughs> another drink. Let's have another drink. drink. All right, here we go. Yellow Rum Podcast. We are hanging out uh, in the Yellow Rum Studio, Yellow Rum Office, the Yellow Rum Bar. And uh, at this point, it, it, it's fun because uh, we try to get these names in here that represent YOLO, that represent the brand, that represent who we are as a company. It just happens to be that you're part of this company, but you're also a giant name. And, and joining us on the podcast today is Francois Baptiste. He is, a, I want to say a nightlife mogul. Can I say, <laughs> can I say that? Is uh, that? Yeah, you can say that. Sounds great. So, like so, it. so a nightlife mogul in Denver. It's it's nice because, dude, I've known you off. We've known each other, but we haven't known each other. Right. Probably, probably like 10, 10, 11 years. Maybe longer than that. To, maybe even longer than that. Yeah. And. We never got to hang out. I was doing the morning stuff. You're the we were opposite worlds, Absolutely. and we've had Trones on here, so it only makes sense to have you on. So it, it's exciting, and I appreciate you coming on and hanging out with us today, man. Oh no problem. Thanks for having me. I, I really appreciate this. This is great. So give a little insight for people that don't know who you are. Uh, we have a lot of Yolo Rum uh, investors like yourself that are watching this. A lot of people that just enjoy Yolo Rum, but give them a little bit of uh, your backstory because you started as a, just a CU student. And I'm a CU alum too. Hey, yeah, go Buzz, go Buzz, man. man. How do you yeah. know that? Yeah, baby. I know, man. Oh, this I, dude, even better. I'm finding out more and more about you, and I'm like, oh, I got to go bust. You yeah. know what I mean? So I like it. But you were there when they were actually good football team. I was there for a long time. I had a long college career, you know, maybe more than the average. But, yeah, I saw them good yeah. and bad. How's that? <laughs> How's that? No, I was there. there, there was a, it was a time when, uh, like, Cordell Stewart was there and Michael Westbrook and all those guys. So, yeah, that was the heyday of – yeah, man, football. that's ball. That's prime. And then, dude, you were there when because uh, this is the I'm reading your story and I'm finding out you're in Boulder. You were there when the Fox Theater opened and you were part of that. Is that right? Yeah, you know it's crazy, and I I didn't even know that that when I got there, literally two years later, it opened up and Fox Theater is pretty much one of the best small venues in the country. Like it's been won many many awards, and so when it opened, it was just kind of at the heyday of hip hop too. Yeah. So the most incredible shows you have ever you can ever imagine of artists played at the Fox Theater. And some of them all at one stage. Like one time it was just this is how far it goes back to is Outcast, Fuji's and the Roots. On the same stage at the Fox Theater. The Fox Theater only holds six hundred and fifty people. Yeah. So just imagine that. Yeah. When those albums came out and you were standing there like ten feet away and seeing Lauren Hill and Outcast and and the roots just play in front of you like on one show that's crazy right that's amazing you were there at the dawn of, of yeah. modern hip-hop if you will because there was hip-hop before that but you were there when all these legends were coming to yeah. pass yeah. so so what was your role i mean so you were there at the fox you were part of that team you saw the, all those but what did you do to get so there? so basically what i did was I, I helped bring these acts to colorado is you know one of the things i've always had my own production company which is called 3d productions and so we used to do events, and we used to, back in the day especially, hip-hop was kind of frowned upon. It was kind of looked like a little bit, made people nervous when you did yeah, yeah. But our whole premise was to make it safe and have a good time. So we always did that in, in, in CU Boulder. And then I kind of got into the concert bug. And so I started working with the Fox Theater and assisting them to bring in these acts and uh, promote them. And... Uh, and you knew what you were doing? Or are you, you kind of figuring it out as you go? Are you faking, faking the hustle? Or are you just kind of, how, how did you know that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think initially when you get into anything, you kind of kind of fake it till you make it. Yeah. But it's passion. Like, my, I love concerts. I love the seeing people enjoy themselves. I like putting two to two together and, and sitting there and be like, wow, this show is incredible. So it was really like, you know, I, learned, I taught myself a little bit That's as cool. well. You know, I, I taught myself what concert promotion was as well as other parts of the music business. And I was really lucky to have a really good mentor at that time. His name was Don Strasberg. I always got to give him props. And um, he's actually still in the music business today. He's actually the president of AEG, Rocky Mountains. Wow. So, but he kind of took me under his wing and kind of let me do what I needed to do and showed me how to do it. And we're, I'm here today still doing it. So, so then after, after Boulder, you kind of looked at Denver and were like, I want to get down to the Denver scene. Like, you left Boulder after 12 years. How long were you in Boulder? Jeez. Uh, I was in Boulder about eight years. Seven, okay. seven eight years. Um, 
No, you know, the funny, weird thing about my career is I've kind of not necessarily fallen into things, but things happen to connect connect the dots. Yeah. You know, it's like you meet somebody who meets somebody. So literally, I got out of college. I was, we were staying in Boulder. Um, I was working at a friend of mine's record shop at that point and helping them bring in hip hop CDs and, and wax at that time. And a friend of mine who worked at the Boulder Theater had brought a gentleman, gentleman, gentleman in and we introduced ourselves. I mean, it wasn't really anything either. It was just really like, hey, nice to meet you. And he's like, yeah, this is the VP of Universal Concerts at that time. And we kind of hit it off, whatever. And um, probably six months after that, I, <laughs> this is how bad I'm about to date myself, right? So my pager starts going off. <laughs> and it's was it the one where you could page back, or was no, it? No, no, this is the like this is the OG no, yeah. pager. Okay, it's like the two you, buttons, like you, the yeah, green you, and the gray. You, you get yeah. a number, and yeah. then you decide am I calling yeah, you back yeah. or what am I gonna do? So I, was, <laughs> I, I kept getting this number. I had just gotten off the plane, um, and so I was like, okay, let me see who it was, because I had been calling them about something else, and they never answered my call. So I called them back, and they're like, hey, we have an assistant position. Would you like to come and work here? And I was just like, well, let's see, I'm pretty broke out of college. <laughs> what are my options here? Yeah, what I'm got? not really doing too much. <laughs> and I'll be having my first corporate job. Yeah. So literally for like the first year, I pretty much traveled from Boulder to South Denver, DTC, where, this, where at that time it was Universal Contest and back every day. And that was crazy. And then I finally moved to Denver. So... That's kind of how I made my way to Denver officially. And, and then, so you get in that scene, and then when you're in Denver, are you doing the same thing that you're doing in Boulder? Is it... Well, I had, to re I had to kind of reinvent myself, because in Boulder, we were doing mostly 18 and up events. Okay. So when I got down to Denver, I had to kind of transfer into 21 and up. Yeah. By that time, I was 21. And so, uh, yeah, I just kind of got into the scene. I had knew, I knew a lot of people from Denver that used to go to Boulder, because at that time, Everybody went to Boulder. Everybody, yeah. all the big cool parties were in Boulder, not necessarily Denver. Yeah. And so uh, I kind of just weaved myself into the whole thing, and uh, I'm there. You know what? Uh, before cheers. I forget, let's do a toast. Yeah, yeah, I just cheers, say man. thank you before I drink this. Uh, no, man. thank cheers you, to man. You. Thank you. Cheers to you, Yolo. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's awesome because so the full circle, we see each other uh, probably two or three weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, you're coming through uh, the Flow Flow Studio, uh, the yeah. radio station over there, and I'm like, oh man, I haven't seen you in forever. I know. And, and then I'm just like, because dude, uh, all to be honest, hustlers are hustlers, yeah. you know. And so I go, hey, you know what? I was like, this is the nightlife mogul. I was like, <laughs> you know that Yolo rum, and you're all, dude, I'm an investor. Yeah. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, I was man. Like, right on. I got the information. I saw it. I read up on it. I knew it was already, you know on the up and up and stuff and I was just like I love this opportunity I was like oh, I'd love to invest in it and so you know after listening to uh, Larry and Kathy and seeing what you were doing I looked up the information and next thing I know I've invested you, into you're it. part of the brand man yeah man well it's uh, it's awesome to have you part of it because no, I, appreciate I, it. I, I I think that hustle respects the hustle yeah. and so if, I like re reading about you, knowing about you, knowing your story. It's like, man, you are the ultimate uh, Denver nightlife hustle. Oh, and now, you. so I read a magazine uh, article, not magazine article, but the 303 magazine uh, online. And so you, you kind of were quoted as saying, let me find it. You said, uh, I just don't think Denver has always been, uh, I think Denver's always been its own worst enemy when it comes to the nightlife. And I, I think, totally agree. Do you go deeper into that and then you think it's still the same? Well, I think, I think sometimes the media looks at the nightlife as a curse or bad things and they definitely overplay certain situations and I think that um, you know I think it's two parts one people have a self responsibility when they go to the clubs and I think it's kind of a lost art that when you go out at night and you have a cocktail you want to go home safe mm -hmm. like you're out there to meet people have a good time you know, and it, I think people just forget that, the, you know, be yeah, kind not, to one another. You and only get, live once. You yeah, only live once. <laughs> yeah, you know, but I think people forget that and, and they mess it up. And, and, and also, I think Denver doesn't understand what they have. Denver has been a growing city for a long time. Yep. 
Denver is a mile high up in the air. Yeah. So whether you're visiting Denver or even you li live here, <laughs> any you drink is gonna hit you three times as hard. Yes, it is. And so they. Oh, well, speaking of which, let me have no. I'm with that. With it. But you're right. But they, they, I don't think they've ever adjusted to the nightlife here yeah. in terms of how do we do it. Like closing clubs at three o'clock in the morning, to me is just, I've seen it firsthand that pushing all these people out at the same time. It's asking for it's bad asking things. For trouble. And, yeah. and the crazy thing is it's proven. It's repeated yeah. over and over and over again. You know, let people kind of... When you get tired, let them go when they need to go. But making sure it's a hard close by two o'clock, they're adults. Yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, and, it's and, like it's like when you be home by two o'clock, son. You know, it's, it's, it's good. And as as anybody could sit here today and say drinking driving is bad, I know my limits. We are human. Yeah. Unfortunately, we are human, yeah. and we make tons of mistakes. Yeah. And that's what happens at the end of the night. People make terrible mistakes. Whether you're going home with the wrong person, you're drinking and driving. I I hope nobody does. That's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. Or punching somebody in the face. I thank God for Uber now. You know what I mean? Like Uber and Lyft, but I don't think enough people are but even they, using that, right? But here's right? a go, and I don't want to get too deep in this, but that's what I'm saying by the city. Because if you're drunk and you leave your car uh, at the park, oh, at the yeah. meter, you're getting a 25 to a $50, maybe even a $75 ticket. On top of that bar tab. On top night. of the bar tab. <laughs> yeah. so, so that's what I think prevents people from being safe at the end of the day is you're just like... Bro, yes, I know I need to go get an Uber, but do I want to spend X? And that's the way people think when they're drunk. Like, I'm not going to spend more yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. And so it's, it's a bad combination. So, yes, I think Denver nightlife is somewhat its own worst enemy. And, I mean, you've seen it enough. You've been in it long enough to, to see it. But but on the flip side of that, you've also been able to see Denver grow. I yeah. mean, if you go down Market Street or any of those streets, it, it's completely different than, than probably five, even five years ago, ten years it's ago. It's completely different now. I mean, I think that the... The, the mindset of the clubs have changed too. Um, I think there's a, a really good positive energy out there with a lot of the clubs. There's a lot of new clubs coming up. Um, so I think, yeah, I mean, the, the club scene has just changed last week when the clubs closed. So now there's a big void in, in, in one of the clubs that closed and one of the clubs is going to pick it up and there might be another club coming here from yeah. what I heard. You know, yeah. there's there's all kinds of interesting You doing things. some nightlife mogul? You getting... You, yeah, no. you know, you know <laughs> I, I, to be honest, I've kind of taken a step back from the nightclubs a little bit um, because I've been doing it so long mm -hmm. and uh, my partner Kevin and, and Squizzy and Cook have kind of taken that and, and ran with it and they're doing an amazing job with that. But I'm kind of really into artist management and the concerts um and as well as and that's how you got started i mean yeah you kind of went you kind of going back to where it all began yeah but on a, on a much more on a, a larger scale yeah. and more responsibilities and and well you understand the game yeah you understand yeah, the business absolutely. a lot more absolutely. so let, let's go into that is that that's three deep uh three deep then right three deep productions net, yeah uh three deep productions and mm -hmm. so let's talk about that a little bit what does that mean for you if you're in that artist game i mean we we talked about uh trev rich uh yeah. it, let's go into that and then talk on that well you know I, I manage Trev Rich and and it's been one of the best experiences of my life just because there's the music business especially in the artist realm there's twists and turns to everything and so it's been really interesting to kind of see uh, where it goes next you know Trev is probably one of the best it's one of the smartest people I know in the in music industry as well as the smartest in, on what he how he sees his vision going forward mm -hmm. um, you know he was signed to cash money for a while um, he's done numerous shows. He sold out many of the venues here in Denver. He was just uh, featured on the Into the Spider Verse movie. All right, I was reading about that, yep. and, and that was almost unexpected, right? Was that or was that? How did that come to be? That was really. I don't know if you can call everything luck, but I would say it was luck. It was literally a friend of a friend introduced Trev. Trev went out to LA to, to really focus on some publishing writing things. Okay, he had lost his wallet. And uh, was you know didn't have any means out there, so he was literally about to go jump on the plane and come back home. Because you know that's frustrating being in LA. You don't have a wallet. Yeah, you, don't have a, you got nothing. You got a phone. Yeah. And somebody called him and said, "Trev, come to the studio. We want you to write for something." So he went into a writing session just as a writer to write the hook for a potential song. At this point, and uh, not knowing anything like that Spider Verse or any nope, of that stuff. Yeah. Nope. Nothing. And and. 
you know, basically as a, uh, how you do the publishing as a writer is you, you write it, but you also somewhat perform it. Mm -hmm. So we performed the hook, came back to Denver a week or two later, get getting calls from our friend in, in LA like, hey, I think this is gonna do something. And then he, they called him and said, hey, they want to keep your hook, they want to use your hook for uh, the song on the Spider-Man movie. Like the major motion picture wow. movie. And, and you didn't know how big that was going to no, be. No, no, he just, yeah. said, he just yeah. says a writer. So yeah. basically, somebody's going to perform your song. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And so they came back. They're like, we couldn't find anybody that did it as well as you did it. Wow. So we want to keep you on the hook. And as you know, it's, a record is all about the hooks. Yeah. So now he got a, a credit as a writer and as an artist. Wow. That's why if you look in the credit, it's called, it's Trevor Ridge versus Trevor Ridge. Because he was only supposed to be a writer on it. Because he goes by his stage name. Because they can't give you a check for both, you know? No, 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 they're going to give you a <laughs> oh, check yeah. for both, what I'm saying. But his stage name is Trevor Rich. Okay. But his real name is Trevor, Trevor. Rich. That, wow. And that's what his publishing over. So when you see in the movie and it comes down, you see it's both. saying, no, it just says Trevor Rich. Wow. Which is kind of funny to us because it's just like. That's awesome. It's a, it's not it's a mistake. It's official. It's official. Yeah, <laughs> it's but, official. It, but it's kind of a. Yeah. It wasn't meant to happen like that, yeah. it, which is actually the cool. Spider Verse was meant to be. That's kind of what. That's yeah. kind of exactly. Have you seen the movie? I have not seen it, but I know that it blew up, and it's, it's amazing. Like, yeah, the kids are loving that. It's like the animation is supposed to be just off the chart. I mean, that. the soundtrack is crazy. If you see it in three D, it's shot in some weird new uh, comic looking thing. So it's it's amazing. It's amazing. So yeah, it won a glow, uh, Golden Globe. And I'm I'm pretty sure somewhere it's gonna be nominated for some kind of Oscar. That's amazing. So so what happens now? Like after all that, where do you and where's Trevor Rich? Like what's Trev, the plan? Trev, as we're speaking right now, Trev is in Atlanta writing. Uh, there's a record label called Dreamville, which is Jay, the artist J Cole's uh, record label. Okay. And so what they do, they both they've done two. So this is number three. It's called Revenge Three. And literally what they do is they take the in, the industry's best producers, writers. An artist and they go into a studio for six days and they just make crazy records like I mean it's like uh, it's like that you take all the artists from the Grammys yeah. and put them in the studio that's what it yeah. is right now and they ask them to come in there as an artist and a writer and just work with them that's amazing so like so you don't know what he's gonna come out with yeah I mean he doesn't know what he's gonna yeah, come he out with know he's gonna come but out the with. thing about it is is in terms of networking and just being in that scene is is crazy you know it's yeah. like i don't know it'd be like in the room you you love basketball and then there's shaq and michael yeah. and kobe and, and then you're playing LeBron. ball with them yeah, and you're playing yeah. ball with them. you're not even just like sitting out there's like they're passing you the ball yeah. expecting you to shoot <laughs> like yo you got to make that shot you're like well that's exactly what it's like no that's air balls exactly what yeah. it's like so yeah that's what he's doing so like i think 2019 for trev is gonna be really big i think there's a good energy in the air and he just works hard man he yeah. just really busts his ass and i think there's a lot of stuff coming down well so do you you bust your butt yeah, too yeah yeah Dang, yeah thanks. i mean Me it's, yeah. it's a team effort i mean yeah. and, and you know what the best part is i mean i it, you've been hanging out but you're just nice you know oh, what i mean thanks, I, man. but you, it's just to be courteous to people because dude because come on let's face it you do have a name in the mile high city Appreciate you are you are that. known that it's like a lot of people get to a certain position where they they almost have an ego about mm -hmm. them and we kind of touched upon that it's like only good vibes happen to good people so yeah. you got to keep that energy going and i don't think if you had a bad uh, attitude, you'd be lasting as long as you have. I, 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 I would agree, but you know, I think just my philosophy is like I don't take life too seriously. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, like I just kind of go with the flow, and I always try to treat people like I want to be treated. And like I, I remember, I've, I've over the years, I've met some really influential people, and you know, the common theme amongst all those people is treat people how you want to be treated. Yeah. You know. Uh, treat the janitor the same way you treat a CEO type thing and and that's and and when I funny thing too is a lot of my friends from CU went on to be music moguls basically wow like you know I, I look back and you could say I could have treated him like trash or something yeah you, know, and, and you it's never like, know and it's not <laughs> even like you know you're using people but it's just like you just never know you never know. You know and some of these friends from college are lifelong friends that are true friends, but they just happen to be crazy moguls yeah. in the industry. You yeah. Know? So, so do you guys call each other for for does it go that deep for advice? Like where yeah. do you, where where are you at in terms of your your career in, in trying to to manage these shows and manage these artists? That where do you see yourself now and where you want to go? 
I would say, you know, that that's that's another interesting question. Is like I don't, I guess in, in a sense you're supposed to have a plan, but like I, for myself, I always try to do things that people said they want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, like you know Trev getting a record label signed or Trev doing a movie. Like I'm not doing that, but that's part of him. That's part of our crew. Yeah. And I want to see what I can do for Trev next. Like, I want to say, yeah. Trev, let's go win a Grammy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so how are you going to win a Grammy? Yeah. You know, like, let's figure By this out. By being in Spider-Verse. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's figure this out. You know, my yeah. professional career, um, you know, I, I definitely want to keep working in the concert business and have a, a long career on it. But I, I don't know. Like, yeah. I'm kind of at that point where you just, like... I kind of know what I want to let, do. Let the wind take, yeah, take the, I the sails. Like that approach, yeah. you know? As long as everything's paid, everybody, my family's happy, everything's good. Uh, I'm not, I don't complain too much. Yeah, no, yeah. that's good. So do you get calls from a lot of artists where you maybe don't want to take them on it, but you're still willing to give them advice? Or, oh, I mean, I'll you, give anybody yeah. advice. I think, yeah. it, it, I'll give any advice. They just may not like it because I'm a very honest <laughs> person. Like, I'm a very, like, you know... This is what you need to do, in my opinion, if you want to succeed. And if you, you know, you can take the advice or you don't. Yeah. You know, it's it'd be again like being in the same room with LeBron and Kobe. Yeah. And all those guys like, hey man, you need to change your shot like this. Yeah. You have a choice. Yeah. And so. you you listen to them or you don't, and you you, yeah, you grow and you go with the punches. Yeah. I, I think that's what that's we're excited to have you part of the Yellow Rum team because uh, that's our team here. Good vibes, yeah. good energy. It was cool to have you come see the office. I'm impressed. I am really impressed. Like I. I didn't know where I was coming today, and I was like pulling up, and I was like, "Wait a second, they have a real office going yeah. on here." I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> okay, I like this." We're legit, like hey, and if you like taking people to that next level, well, then you're gonna yeah. be able to help us and, yeah. and be part of that. So I would, I would definitely, you know, like I said, I I really like the product. I really like the whole kind of story behind it. I like that, you know, I like the way it tastes. Like, that's yeah. the most important thing. Yeah. You know, it's like, you gotta like the product. You have to, especially mm. when it's liquor, because otherwise you're just gonna be like, ooh, you make, mm. you make that that face after you drink it, and you don't you don't yeah. make that with this. But they got good people surrounded. Your partners, yeah. Larry and Kathy, and every, the staff I met today, like, this is cool, man. Yeah. I'm good. I, I see nothing but positive vibes. Well, it's excited to have you. We appreciate you coming on the podcast. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, we're. I think we got to keep this going and seeing where uh, we can help each other because absolutely, it's crazy that uh, after eleven years, we we finally got to sit down and it's it's nice to have this conversation and see. Oh man, that's that's the man behind the name. Just, <laughs> I, and I will say this: that it, it, the name is synonymous in in the radio industry, at least. I so I mean, it's funny because it's like. I know you started in radio or you're part of it back in the day, but even now you're not. So you, yeah. have, you haven't necessarily been in it for a while, but your name's still brought up and everyone, everyone everyone knows you. And uh, you. even Phil, the C, uh, CEO of Yellow Rum, was like, oh, Francois, he, he unfortunately had to be in the Springs today, but he wanted to meet you. And it, uh, it's not even a, a, a celebrityism thing. I think it's just more of a, a respect. I mean, yeah, man, I think, I think there's always room to make a deal, make some money, do something creative and cool, and, and like I said, I'm I'm really excited about this. Yeah. I'm really excited about this. Well, yeah. let's do it together, man. Yeah, man. Anything you need, we got you, bro. Appreciate 100%. it, man. No, I thank really you appreciate. so much. We look we look forward to more. If you want to see everything that he's about, you want to see more on Trev Rich, all you got to do is go to 3deep.net, 3D Productions, Francois, hanging out with us, YOLO Rum. We're going to have some drinks right now. Thank you for <laughs> watching. Thank you for listening. YOLO Rum Podcast, and thank you, Francois, for coming on today, man. Thank you. Hi, me. Oh, <laughs> oh,